My name is Paige Johnson and I've been running a Statler Stitcher for several years. I do it every day and I love it. Today I'd like to share a couple of my tips with you. First of all, I'd like to show you how to create a boundary. We all have quilts that we're looking at and we're kind of wondering what are the designs going to look like once we put them on the quilt. Once you create a boundary and put the designs over it, you will know exactly how they're going to fit on your quilt. It's actually a good idea to try this before you start to stitch. It's much easier to delete something when it's virtual on your screen instead of ripping out stitches. I'm working on my SAM, my standalone mode on my desktop, and I want to create a layout and get an idea of what my designs are going to look like before I take my project over to my Statler. The first thing I'm going to want to do is get a good look at that quilt. One way to do that is to have it right in front of you. Another is to have a picture. And here I have a picture of the quilt. Now I'd like to look at this picture and create a boundary at the same time. One of the ways to do that is with a split screen on my computer. I want to be able to go back and forth with looking at my picture and working on my CAD screen. I'm going to go into where I keep my pictures and I'm going to find the picture I want. If I right click on it, I can open it up with Windows Photo Viewer. And that is going to give me this view of my picture. I can take this screen and minimize it down so that it is a smaller screen. Now I can go back to my Creative Studio. Every time I want to look at my picture, I can click on it on the bottom bar here. I can move my picture in and out of my screen so that I always know what my next step is going to be. What I ultimately want is a boundary that is going to represent the piecing of this quilt. So if I measure my block and I can see that this inside here is six inches and each one of these triangles is a two inch piece along the flat edge, that gives me a place to start. I'm going to start by changing my grid size to 6 inches to represent that inside block. I'm then going to start drawing some lines and I'm going to start with a point to point line. I'm going to go into my point to point, make sure that the line is selected. When I click on point to point, I also want my grid snap on. This is going to keep my lines right on the grid. I can tell the grid snap is on because the G down here is highlighted and I have a pink dot. So I'm going to create that first spacing here by clicking on the grid. I'll stop drawing by right clicking on my mouse. Now I have a pattern. Now that I have my interior block, I want to move ahead and start to make the spacing for the triangles around the outside. Now this space from here to here is two inches and these triangle spaces are an inch high. So I'm going to want to change my grid to one inch. I'm going to go into my view and change my grid size from 6 to 1 inch. I want to go back into my drawing a point to point line and I can click all the way around the outside of my block on my grid lines to give myself the piecing that is the triangles on the outside. Once again, I'm going to right click to stop and hold that. If I want to take another look at my block, it's always down here on the bottom of my screen. So now I have that block. Looks like I'm going to need a line going around the outside here as well. So let's put in 
one more line, and that's going to give me this center block right through here. I would like to have all of these blocks represented, and that's why I chose to draw these as lines instead of boundaries. I'm going to select all the patterns on my screen. With all of those patterns selected, I can right click and combine them into a group. Now with one pattern, I can go in and do a circle array. I want three copies. I'm going to place the center of my circle array on one of the grid corners. Now what this has done is now given me four of the same block. Now if I select all those patterns once again and circle array, placing that center at one of the corners, I now have 16 blocks. And this is a better representation of what my quilt looks like. I can go in, select all my patterns, combine them into one pattern, and then I can convert that pattern to a boundary. Now I can start to move my designs over it and I'll have a good idea of what my finished project's going to look like. I can take a point to point pattern and start to play with spacing and figure out how I'm ultimately going to quilt this quilt once it's on my machine. I can do the same thing with the circle array trick. Even though I know this won't quilt like this, I get a really good idea of what it's going to look like when I'm done. You can find out more about my tips and tricks and additional videos by visiting my website at www.thequiltingpage.com.